I am Ruth Ann Thorne, and I've been an art dealer for more than two decades, working with artists from all over the world. I've always wondered, do artists create from within, or are they influenced by their surroundings? And why do they choose where they live? What do they get from their environment? If they were to live somewhere else, would their art be different? These are the questions we will answer as we explore cities across the country in Art of the City. New Orleans is known for a diversity of artists, but one of the ones that are really amazing is this punk rock artist that does Autobahn style work of animals and swamp life, alligators, all types of things based here in New Orleans. And so we're going to go into his studio. His name is Michael Gidry, and we're going to see what he is going to be creating. My parents met in New Orleans, and my father was always a little bit angry that um, they lived out there, that they bought the house to begin with, because he knew he would never leave. Um, but it was close to a school, which was why my mother wanted to live there. So kind of like a safe little neighborhood. To it's grow. a safe neighborhood. You know, I'd always come into New Orleans for a little bit of adventure, um, a bike rides away, so I could just ride my bike. But my father, um, my father moved to New Orleans uh, shortly after leaving. Uh, a monastic order. He's a Trappist monk in Kentucky. And my mother was a traveling nurse and had been to uh, Alaska, Hawaii, and uh, had moved to New Orleans to do a stint at Charity Hospital. And they met in the French Quarter. But my parents had one little print of a, of a Cubist Picasso piece oh. um, over their stove. And it was probably like ripped out of a magazine and framed. And um, so I found out who Picasso was and sort of went down this rabbit hole with him. Um, I was into Dada art when I was really, really young. Wow, that's <laughs> impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most adults don't know what Dada yeah. is. But I didn't, know, <laughs> I didn't know much, but I knew what I knew, and I was just sort of, uh, would, would look at those one, uh, few little things that I, I, I was into. When I was in high school, my brother was an artist, and I, uh, which gave me reason not to be. Never thought I could be, because I thought you had to be born uh, with particular skills. And um, I exposed myself to a few classes, but I still never thought I could make it into a career. I bought a one-way ticket to Manhattan. I was working at the time in a, in a warehouse for somebody that would, um, it was a designer who designed uh, lamps. They do spun brass lampshades that were very, very expensive. And I would either pack them up for shipment or I would walk them to where they were going. And they were, uh, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars lampshades. Wow! So I would, uh, <clears throat> I'd walk over people sleeping on the street and go in these big apartments, and there were, uh, you know, Picassos and Cezans hanging on the wall where I'd be delivering. But, so, uh, and then I decided uh, I wanted to move back to New Orleans. I moved back to New Orleans and started painting in the studio, and then I went to uh, the New Orleans Academy of Fine Arts, which All was, right. uh, which was what I wanted to, I wanted to work to. I wanted to work at night and study during the day, which is what I that ended up doing. That is awesome. That. Yeah. And so what, at what age did things start clicking for you? I mean, you know, you, the struggle of the artist is... No. <laughs> <laughs> That's not possible because you look yeah, like yeah, you're, yeah. you know. But when did it really start? When did you start being able to actually support yourself with your artwork? Once I started showing actually at the Jazz Fest, I started okay. seeing, you know, uh, what I could do. Let's right. check out this beautiful piece. Pelican. I love the pelican. Every year I do the uh, jazz festival. And there, um, I'm a Louisiana nature painter. So every year I revisit a lot of the same themes and put different spins on them. And um, this year I have a lot of tropical things going on. So how many years have you been doing jazz fest? Um, I believe it will be my 13th, lucky 13th. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. that's great. 
Do you feel like you're extracting things from being here in New Orleans? Oh, for sure. One of the things I've always liked to do is to um, take something like the marsh grass, which is a uh, very specialized, um, has specialized equipment for that environment and extract it from the environment and uh, isolate it. And, um, or like a crab with, the, with its claws um, and sort of isolate those elements that make it, that make it adaptable to that environment. Has there been anything that you have gone through that you would want to share that art has allowed you to adapt to this thing we call life? Well, you know, um, being a working artist, it, I, I find everything sort of, everything sort of a draw for me. I, so I'm constantly making sure that I'm able to concentrate. Having a three-year-old, mm -hmm. um, any relationship, any other job, you know. I've been working my whole life to be able to just you know, concentrate on my work. So. Well, I think what I see in your work when I look at it is it just, the colors make me really happy. It makes me feel like I'm in New Orleans because everywhere you look in this city is super colorful yes, yeah. and alive. And I think you grasp all of that. You know, if, if someone looks at one of my pieces and laughs, I usually feel like the, the connection has been made. You know, mission accomplished. You know, you, you get it. Some artist works just put a smile on your face, and Michael Guidry's work is certainly one of those artists. He has this amazing whimsy and mystery to his work, and hearing about his life here, growing up right here in New Orleans, has been really inspiring. You know, the way that he talked about being down at the swamp and um, taking things out, plant life, and then being inspired by it. He is really an inspiration, I think, to people who see his work, and it's just work that makes you happy.